Welcome back to Goron Island. Today we're actually going to be heading to the temple. First, we got to introduce ourselves to everyone. <laughs> for once. Also, I do like it. We do have an appropriate sword for the Goron Island. Yeah. Alright, Pizza Joe... He preempted what I was going to say, which was Pizza Joe no, but he rolled <laughs> back before he jumped off the cliff. That's actually a shortcut for once we get to the other side. <laughs> I thought he was going to say, your face is unknown to me. I don't recognize it. I don't see a face. <laughs> I have face blindness. <laughs> This is also what I say to my family. <laughs> what a beauty she is, this ship! That's your brother. <laughs> I'm just proud of you, man. It won't love him back. <laughs> you deal with that, bye! <laughs> it's my boat, you jerk. <laughs> You know, we could take you on- actually, no, don't get on the ship, you might sink. Or sink us with you. Or just blow into the mic. Come on! <laughs> I would've preferred- Ah, the boy meowed, like in the prophecy. I'll hit the switch <laughs> for you. <laughs> I couldn't enforce it if I wanted to, anyway. <laughs> and I'll just assume you're him. Oh. So you guys don't just eat rocks. Maybe it's just these Gorons. Interestingly, wood hearts are a very common treasure in Spirit Tracks. There's only one in all of Phantom Hourglass. Hmm. That is actually pretty interesting. Aha. Fuck him from a distance. You killed my pets! <laughs> Why did you do that? They made the island better. Well, later, kid. Wait, wait, actually. Alright, later, kid. Thank you for your arrow plants. <laughs> I mean, I would actually think that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> I don't know if that was him trying to be nice about not using the word outsider. Ah, you're an off-islander. We don't like outsiders. And we can see the bug in it, dude. We know what it is. <laughs> you seem to be an other type of personer. Really? Look at that beard. It's a mustache, beard, and his hair. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I gotta say, though, I think his beard out of all the other Gorons is probably my favorite. Since he's got the beard-mustache combo going. But you did greet me. <laughs> so you're closer to becoming part of our tribe. God damn it, who's the one I'm missing? You do actually have to talk to everyone in order to become an honorary Goron. Luckily, the last guy's just over here, and he wants to do wrestling or something. Ugh. Uh, the wrestling's more of a hey hey kind of thing. He actually has muscles. <laughs> Pizza Joe might be strong, but his arms are noodly.
I could smell that you met them. <laughs> also, I heard you in that conversation because it wasn't very far from my door. <laughs> You guys are always so antsy. I didn't keep count. So I just looked it up. <laughs> well, that's kind of nice of them. Like They make you do their little quiz, and if you get one right, they pay you. He's staring at my damn ship. And he won't shut up about it. As in, how many holes in the wall are there? <laughs> wow, you got three out of six. I'm impressed with you. You still have three more to go. What kind of fucking question is that? I did like the cute little almost fake out thing they did. But two questions remain, and my beard is in pain. <laughs> is that the question or the or a riddle? <laughs> that answer hurt me. <laughs> oh my chest! I'm really hoping for like a a real sidewinder. Like, all right, last question. How many fingers does this whole island have in total? Like, oh, fuck. Ugh. That is a chest. I just haven't gotten it yet. Sorry, my air conditioner turned on. <laughs> this is a pretty good punchline, though. I'm making a marketer remind me of the chest. Uh, I just wanted to be Pizza Joe. <laughs> yeah, Pizza Goro sounds gross. And now we have to pay back all the money we got. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> you know what, just for that, I don't want to be part of your truck. I also set up a hedge maze, because I'm very old. You might even have to do a little bit of Sudoku. Because I like Sudoku. Oh, he's a pissy little jerk. G kid, why are you so uppity? <laughs> ah, I see, you're also deaf and an idiot. Well, goodbye. <laughs> The first thing I want to do is go back and talk to some of the people, now that we're an official Goron. And also, I guess, Gongoron headed that way. Yeah, you know, I imagine at one point, you guys are eventually going to run out of names. I say that, but then there is a guy who was called Darunia. But you can't just use Goron for everything. Like, he kind of stopped. <laughs> Trust me, as much as I would hate doing that, I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> Use her mouth, like we did. No. But I will try to wrestle the next person I see. Bring your friends! 
They might get annoyed and or disturbed by me. Yeah, how the hell did he get through here? Maybe he, like, squeezed through those cracks. <laughs> like he turned into liquid. Either that or I'm assuming he rolled over all this? Oh, God. Oh, blue and electrified. They're evolving, but still dead. There's another hole. We saw one of those in the Temple of the Ocean King. And we already saw the bomb shoes. So yeah, those are actually holes that use bomb shoes to get through. So we're going to be getting those in this temple. Well, I mean, I guess it's not the first Zelda game to just spoil what the item is. I do like them being pleasant surprises, though. I think the rocks with the shoes under them don't have shadows. These bombs are coming extremely useful, however. Hey, I dropped that, damn it! <laughs> By the way, if you go through the maze and you find my 100 rupees, can you please bring that back so I can give you another quiz? Then you can become gold membership, Goron. <laughs> we'll send a rock through the mail. There, that pattern is a hint that you need to bomb there. Gotta get all the treasure. <laughs> I will say Goron Island is probably where all of my memories are gonna stop from Phantom Hourglass. I think <laughs> after this point I'm most likely gonna be blind. like likes I say more is this the first time we've seen them in Phantom Hourglass because I know we just saw them in Spirit Tracks yeah we saw that and other things that can devour our Zelda boy in there but I think this might have been the first like like or if not it might have been in one of the caves where maybe the one where we almost got the shovel That's a shortcut back to the entrance, so we don't have to go back through the maze and the entire rest of the island. Temple time. And we've got, I believe those are Armos. Well, no luck in finding him, guess he sank. Oh, we gotta be most. I think hitting them with bombs only temporarily disables them. Although that noise of theirs is pretty alarming. Okay, that's an inactive statue. We gotta push that onto the switch. Yeah, I see the Beemos is active again. Yep. Hmm. Well, I guess it would make sense they're designed differently in this one. Since we're in not quite Hyrule. Oh, that one's alive. Hitting with bombs disables them. It doesn't destroy them, like we just saw. We need to use them to activate switches. I don't think it'll wake up again, though. <laughs> you should climb up here. Oh, it's timed. We'll have to drop a bomb from the higher ground in order to get that chest. Ah, uh, that was... <laughs> that was very close. This is gonna be annoying. I was right. Oh. Okay, it didn't have to show it again. <laughs> you you did it. You messed up. You did it. You, no. There we go. Um, that might not be close enough. I got uh, it. <laughs> a 
Oh yeah, and we still have a whole other quadrant to go to. God damn it. <laughs> Beats Joe, come on. Well, if you're gonna fuck up, fuck up in a way that you recover from quickly. <laughs> Is there such a thing as easy recovering from quicksand? When you can teleport. <laughs> when life decides to give you a mulligan, I suppose. Uh, aha. For a second there, I was thinking the pillars themselves were the hint. Which they might still be, actually. Still haven't found Gungoron. Well, usually at my try-everything phase, throwing bombs at walls is like the first thing I do. Ah, uh, see? I thought maybe there would be a switch over there. No, but there is light coming from a wall that's currently blocked. What's pain when you have no patience? <laughs> and plenty of hearts. Oh good, my favorite. Uh, you sure we can't tone down the intensity there? <laughs> that was really it, okay. Just those two. Okay, you can also use Zeras on them. Nice. But it's still temporary. There you are, you idiot. Oh, oh. Don't brother me. Now it's brother. What, the bubbles? Grab you with what? You know you can throw rocks at those, right? I think you have to apologize a little more than just that. Come on, let me hear the apology for being a jerk. Oh, those guys. They actually have hands. <laughs> I can't imagine two skulls running up and just grabbing a guy. Unless they just bite him and pull him by his hair. I like how her text said that slower. <laughs> Looks like you're kind of doomed. So now we switch between Pizza Joe and Gongoron. Gongoron controls a little differently. He's pretty much constantly rolling. Not quite the secondary character I was expecting to play as in this game. I think he's pretty fun to control. Yeah, especially because he can move like that. And he kind of destroys everything. Except them. I think somebody <laughs> rolling them somebody rolling themselves with all their body weight should crush a thing. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, if you tap him, he also does a jump roll. Oh, I saw that like like. Does Gunboron share your HP? I feel like he does. I think so, if he even takes damage. So just imagining what a game over with him looks like. Like Pizza Joe's just shrugging and being like, well, I guess he died for me. Now I need to get Gungoron over there. With a jump? Oh. <laughs> I said a jump. <laughs> oh. There we go. Yeah, just kick it. 
I just said I'm so disappointed that that didn't work. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there they are. Gravity does apply to me. I used so many on Grandpa before you showed up. It was funny, that's how I woke him up. Ah, uh, he's still affected by quicksand, though. Oh, but anyway. <laughs> oh, but that was the puzzle solution. <laughs> he was the last enemy. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you got them, you got them, you know. Oh good, it's not worth as much money now. Now let's actually use the bomb shoes. Once again, you draw out the path on the bottom screen, and you can actually see where it heads. Yeah, it's really helpful. If it was anything like, I imagine like drawing the sea chart, it might have been a little finicky. God, where are you? Get down here! <laughs> I would imagine it would, like, kind of jitter around a lot. Or if it was, like, the bomb chew is not of time. <laughs> and it makes that brain <laughs> noise, too. <laughs> I would say these bomb shoes are an improvement on that. Oh yeah, for sure. You have actual control instead of just lining yourself up and hoping for the best. No, don't waste a bomb shoe on them. <laughs> no, 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 this one. Oh, they had three for you anyway. The bump shoes can go into the holes diagonally. They're not gonna hit the wall and explode. They're pretty forgiving. You know, when I when I was a kid, when I had the bomb shoes, I didn't realize that they were modeled after a mouse. I thought they were stingrays. <laughs> because of the old graphics. Years later I looked back and I was like, oh I I'm just stupid, that's the problem. Very well hidden. <laughs> Let's use this giant rock to cover up this tiny hole. The thing is, the bomb shoes do have a limited range. I'm kind of rubbing up against it, trying to get to that switch. Hmm. Ow. Gotta hit the two of them at the same time. These are the kind of puzzles I actually like. They're pretty clever. Yeah, they make use of the item and then they make you, like, actually experiment with it. And you can press on the touchscreen to get control of Link again, while the bomb shoe's still moving. It is annoying having to switch back and forth between it, though. I forget, are the shoulder buttons used for anything? I think they're used for automatically opening the menu to switch between your touchscreen items. Hmm. I think it would have been cooler if, like, if you pushed it and it just went to the next item, so that way you didn't have to worry about that. Oh no, actually, they're how you pull out the weapon. Ah. Along with just tapping the icon. If that's how I would usually do it. Game's already all touchscreen, anyways. And now we got color switches. The color of the switch correlates to which of the walls, I guess, are active at the time. Oh, 
Those ones will always remind me of Oracle of Ages. Yep. Dink. <laughs> I think for that other Armos, I try to angle it so that he dies as he lands on the switch. Which he did. <laughs> nice. Uh -oh. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza Joe said it didn't work the second time. I might as well. Come on. And again. Just in case. It's always that Zelda instinct. Where if you think you don't do it, it's gonna bug you unless you do it. And I will say this, uh, it's a very straightforward dungeon. Yeah, they tend to be. There's no backtracking or anything awful like that. It's mostly just go here, solve puzzle, move forward. I usually like those the best. Ah, but they have their own bombs. You idiot, that's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> just backhanding me across the room. <laughs> Well, that was a backhand across the back. I don't know if you would fly like that. I think you'd be more like, ah! Dude, why? I'm trying to do the spin. Bomb shoes can cover the sand, at least. I'm looking around for the switches. There they are. Probably an odd thing to bring up, but I feel like it's a little relevant with the bomb shoes. But you remember that board game Mouse Trap? Yeah. I don't remember how I got mine, but I ended up having it. And all that I would do, and apparently I learned a lot of people do this, all they do is just build the obstacle course and watch it. Nobody actually played the game itself. <laughs> For when you're really lazy. <laughs> ah, because it was timed. Lazy or clever? So I do believe in the mantra of uh, work smarter, not harder. I hear another one. Thought I couldn't see the tail, huh? Oh, another one, goddammit. I was wondering, because they were snake-like, were they gonna see the bomb shoes and try to, like, eat them and explode in the process? The bomb shoes can kill them. For example. Yeah. <laughs> if it looks like I'm struggling to get the line to reach the switch, it's because the further it goes, the harder it actually gets to get the line moving, because you do rub up against the limit. Just want to kill that one. No mercy. And because I do. We can totally sell this and not give it to anyone who needs it. It'll still hit the switch. Yeah. And 
And there's Vosky. But where did our Goron guy go? Ah, maybe he drowned. Like, we only fought with him and did a set of puzzles for one room and then he was gone. <laughs> he did say, I found a hole. I'm gonna squeeze through it. He's still there. <laughs> okay. For me, that would be the tell. Oh, that's what you want me to think. Oh, they were right. I mean, if you look at the map, you can see the other side of the wall, so clearly there isn't. <laughs> you don't really use bombs themselves in the boss fight. You more use bomb shoes. I do just tend to sit here and wait for the seeds to respawn to refill my ammo. Naturally. So we got a really big arena, but we're stuck on this side. Because there's quicksand here. Yeah, this is probably the small amount of area I think Link's ever had in a fight. Dongo Rongo. <laughs> okay, I do kind of like that name. There he is. Are you sure you should be here? Eventually I got sweaty enough to slip through. I see. So at the start of this, we control Gongoron. We have to basically bait Dongorongo to open himself up, because just on his own, Gongoron's not going to do too much. Enemy snakes will spawn in. We can't use Gongoron to hit them, because otherwise they're going to head down to Pizza Joe and do damage. Right there when he roars, you want to be next to a wall, because he's going to run into a wall. Which I will, constantly. Yeah. I do think it's funny that not only do they share life force, but they have to remind the other when they're currently in pain. So this fight actually took me quite a while because I didn't quite get the hang of it. But when he hits the wall, you need to dash into them as Gongoron to knock him onto his side, at which point he'll lie there with his mouth hanging open, and that's when you send a bomb chew right down his throat. And Gongoron will be caught in the explosion. Oh no, it moved to the left. You'd think running into a bomb would give you a stun effect or something. Just skipped ahead, because this fight took a while. Stop kicking my foot. <laughs> Ow. I mean, I do like the idea of having an assistant kind of character. God damn it, I hit his jaw. But he, he could also be a giant idiot and get in the way. <laughs> I'm not your enemy, that's for running away. This fight would be easier if Pizza Joe or Gongoron could do the bare minimum and just get out of the way when they're being attacked. Yeah, I'm sure it wouldn't have been too hard to program them to just kind of move a little bit or something. At the very least, enemies freeze when you're drawing out the bomb chew path. That last hit teleported me to the center.
heartburn. It'll knock you out. Because that's all I've been doing. Running ahead. <laughs> oh, but the boss is still here. Oh. It's okay. We didn't need him. Dongo Rongo Ronger. <laughs> Dongo Ronger Rounder 2. Er. It sounded better in my head. Dongun Rompa. There. Got one. I beat the comment section. Why did I pick the shovel? Because you were going to dig him a grave? At this point, he's basically just a Dodongo. You know, that's actually pretty sad. They had a... a I'm not going to say it was the best gear, like a little gimmick they had, but it, I did like that you had to be clever with your bomb shoes. Here, it's just like, alright, throw a bomb in its mouth again. But uh, Nintendo sure loves their throwbacks. <laughs> I'm dizzy too, but for different reasons. He seems like he's partying it up. Okay, now he passed out. Breathe it in, Pizza Joe. Just this once. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. I keep thinking this is going to be the time where it just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah it falls over. Yeah, <laughs> it falls over and the Phantom Hourglass shatters. Two minutes have been added, and two minutes have been lost. <laughs> Welcome to reality, Pizza Joe. Alright, I think at this point we're like... Formally in the final third of the game. For sure. Like, the pure metals I recall being, like, one of the big last sagas. Eh, for the first half. After that, we absolutely did not need you at all. And for, like, maybe one room. Awful lot of work for a sandwich, guys. <laughs> Crimsonine. That's awesome. Now we can use this to throw it at Bellum, and it'll hurt. I'll run on ahead, like I do. <laughs> You know, there's always one thing that always made me go, huh, about these things in games where it's like, ah, yes, this is an extremely rare material that you can only have basically one of, and there's always, like, a blacksmith who somehow he has the experience to work with it. Like, what if he breaks it by accident? Then what do you do? <laughs> so I need you to go to another fairy island and, uh... Luckily in our archives, we found a backup. <laughs> I thought you said it was a one of a kind. No, it's not. It is a one of a kind, but so is the second one. <laughs> I just politely handed it a bomb. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. 
Because I'm electrocuted, I have to wait for it to recover. Maybe I can still do it. I'm electrocuted, and so is my map. Hey, not bad, piece of joke. Oh, damn it, I should have been closer. Uh, I made it. Yeah, that's good. I was gonna say, in that case, yeah, you, there's no way in hell you could have done that with an electrified map. Wait a second, I already dug there. <laughs> Wait a second, let me get some more money. Alright, well, uh, he ran ahead, ruined everything, I uh, got caught, I saved him. Got stuck in a hole, stood around while being attacked by a giant lizard. And after partially helping me, he left me for dead. That is difficult for me to say, because you are clearly smaller. <laughs> and you, you don't stand very tall. Hey. Suddenly, I want to have a quiz show, so, what do you think of my beard? The entry price, 200 rupees. Eh? Eh? You're scowling, but I think that's just the Goron pride in you. Bye. We'll follow you into the new world, I guess. <laughs> 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 okay, that was actually funny. I hate when Gorons go away, but I also hate Gorons more. <laughs> you especially. I like how they act like I've lived here forever. Yeah, it's, it's only been like about a half hour. <laughs> When I marry a boat. <laughs> I'll send you a postcard, Pizza It'll be read out loud, hopefully in an embarrassing situation. By a man who looks like he lives with a punched face. And also once we finished Wow, a thousand rupees. Wow. Once we finish the temple we can upgrade our bomb bag. I can't think of many situations, if there are any at all, where you're gonna need more than ten, but why not? Yeah, especially if you have constantly respawning jars around you. But when you leave and come back, you can also buy a hard container. If you forget that, it's okay, there will also be one at Molina Island, I think. And they just carry over? Yeah. I was gonna say, uh, I think I was more impressed by the bomb chew bag because it was a golden shackle on it. Like, I really went the extra mile for that. That's why it costs a thousand. It had nothing to do with the bag. <laughs> yeah, the bag itself. It's, oh, that's just... It's old. It's an old bag, man, but the, the shackle. Now, I think here, I think I had to set the DS's clock ahead a day for this to show up. But if you remember that island, the DS island, the minigame is open now because Gongoron now works there. Good for him, even though he left the island before us somehow. I know you've mentioned the time thing. <laughs> I just like, oh, you're really leaving? Well, not if I leave first. Let me lick it just to be sure. Yeah, let me taste it. Not salty enough. Mm, does taste crimson. <laughs> Throws it in the ocean. Get another one. Does that not line, Vic? <laughs> wow. You yelled at me, and I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna go on my ship. Sails off without us. <laughs> I thought he was just gonna walk off the other side of the boat and fall in the ocean. All the rage, as in, it will make you mad. 
<laughs> it's all the rage. Infested with everyone who's infuriated with me. <laughs> and I'm a very annoying man. <laughs> Why do you think I live on this island by myself? Oh, and this kid. Yeah, brother! He's just as annoying as I am. He brought more people. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? Isn't your dad the head of the Gorons? How bad is he? Also, isn't that not your dad at all? Isn't that just some guy? So if you thought it was strange that we only played as Gongoron for a little bit in the temple, that's because you control him for this minigame. It's an obstacle course. We go around the DS island, and we need to hit all of these crystals. The record is 35 seconds. If you can hit that, I think you get a hard container. And you only need to beat it once. It took me a few tries. Mostly just to figure out how to do it. And it's not just getting the crystals, you also have to make it to the end. Wow. So wait, the game is I have to pay somebody to race for me, and the entire skill-based aspect is entirely on him? Yes. <laughs> you know, I call that a rip-off where I'm from. Okay, so not a hard container, but a bomb chew bag upgrade. And you can do it again for more prizes if you want. I do like how that one had three uh, bomb shoe patterns on it. There's no time to help my dad tell a kid to do the work for me. <laughs> yeah, in a few years when I have my first son, I'll try to see if this business model works. Alright son, I got the man's $20, now spin around in a circle. Alright, sharks. Let's see if I can actually figure out what to do with you. Ah, oh, shoot you when you jump. Sounds good to me. <laughs> My one weakness, I'm immune in the water, but when I leave the water, I'm vulnerable. And there's something else to salvage here. We did get quite a few treasure maps in the last couple parts. That one just looks like a bunch of pressure built up and it exploded. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that really the strange chimney or the busted chimney? Ooh, we're getting quite a few golden stuff now. Now that's actually pretty nice. Though as we saw in Expensive Beetle Shop, there is a level above golden. Or maybe the gem anchor goes to the golden ship, I'm not sure. It could work. Ooh, yeah. We have to use this. Our ship is gonna look 30 times better now. Let's slap some of that on there. Golden and demonic. <laughs> and spiky. No, just golden. And <laughs> we have a busted pipe. <laughs> That's a great combination, I love it. Looks elegant and horrifying. I think that perfectly describes our style. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the... Uh, hmm. We're not elegant. Actually, you know what, I take a pick. <laughs> I'm not even sure we're bad enough to be horrifying. <laughs> We're in between with two completely different adjectives. But next time, we're going to be heading to that island that we saw earlier, the one that's completely surrounded by a wall of ice, and that's where the next dungeon's going to be. My guess is Ice Dungeon, if memory's on my side. I mean, it'd be weird if it wasn't. <laughs> Unless they wanted to sidewind us. Welcome to the Ice Dungeon, and now that you're inside, welcome to Forest Dungeon 2. Oh, <laughs> Alright. <laughs> it's a cold forest. <laughs> I kind of want to see that, but for the wrong reasons. Not because I think that's a good idea. 